Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to Wilgress Books' Oh My Word, which is our uh, open spoken word night. I can't uh, so, uh, Lindsay, you, uh, would you like to come up? Hi. Um, two of these poems are about love, if you can all cope with that, and then there's a more serious one. <laughs> the first one is Immortal Essence. When lying beside you, I was at one with all that was sacred. In those moments when time stood still, my spirit soaring, becoming one with everything that exists, bringing Nirvana close. I became the stars and the moon. I became the lover and the beloved. I became the singer and the song. I can hear you calling. I have heard it all my life. Souls never die. We will talk again. Thank you. this mystery called us. It has to do with love, because until we reach out for each other, us is not even there. It arrives with tenderness. It speaks through silent understanding. So us is no longer a choice, not if you and I wish to grow into one another. Us unites, increases our strength. You and I may have given up long ago, but we will not let us. When we look into our hearts, what do we see? Not you and I, only we. There will come a time when you will be gone from me, and us will be no more. I shall see you in my mind, and know I have never loved you more. Far across oceans of blue and skies of azure, I know that I shall no more Look upon your beautiful face. And the last one, if I may read to you, was written within the cloisters of Lincoln Cathedral. Contemplating, cocooned in warmth and monastic mysticism, lost in the reverie of times past, on into the momentum of the present. Searching in mind for the connection that will bond the true, making all become clear. My soul longs for the calm and serenity that the union may bring, when the chasm bonds. Prayers of centuries past fused together on an ether of, in sorry, on an ether of incense, whilst a man clothed in black shares the bread and the wine. Warm, mellow stone of Gothic and Romanesque design intertwines to mesmerize the onlooker in majesty and grace divine. From within, choir voices crescendo in choral symphonies of sublime intermezzo, combining, fusing, orchestrating in outpourings of diaphanous passion to the Lord of hosts in heaven. There we go. Uh, thank you, Lindsay. That was brilliant. Uh, yeah, like I said, please don't feel rushed uh, when we get up here. Um, it's really nice to see such a uh, diversity of poetry and material. That's what we're all about tonight. We love the fact that everyone's doing something different. Even if you come up here and you've done a few poems and you think later on the night, actually, I want to do a little bit more. That's absolutely fine. That's what we love. That's what we want you guys to do. So take your time. Do as many or as little as you want. It's no problem at all. First bit, let's do a bit of audience participation. Yay. Okay, um, and all you literally need to do is just a simple beat, which is just... Because I'm all about that bass, about that bass, no treble. All about that bass, about that bass, no treble. All about that bass, about that bass, no treble. All about that bass, keep it going. Cause a real cutie cutie, she don't need no booty booty. When it comes to size of heart, she's a real beauty beauty. It don't set you apart from those skinny little tarts. 
if you sit there munching heavy on that chewy, fruity, tooty. Where's the beauty standards gone? If you sit and yearn and love for some junk up in that drop or that buff hunt to tap up on. Or a gap up in your thigh sets your self-esteem up high. You'll get nowhere in your life if your mind and soul ain't shit. Thank you. I took a sleeping pill to try and numb and heal. The pain and all the hurt from the love you had to kill. You pulled me up from the gutter. My heart was in a flutter. You melted it like butter. Now it's rolling down the hill. I'm rising from the ashes. I'm trudging through the mire. Your soul remains just icy cold. I'll break it with my fire. Memories just like movies. Your arrows pierce right through me. I'll fuck your life to so sue me. Now just hear my last desire. I'll try to get across integrity I've lost. You used to see me as beneath you. Now you'll see me as your boss. I'm done with this charade. I deserve a huge parade. Take your head out of your ass. Maybe next time you'll see me walk away. Thank you. <laughs> I picked up the telephone. I was sat in my bedroom. I was all alone. There was a chill in my bones, and I listened to you on the other end of the foot, on the other end of the receiver, and you wanted me to come home. And I said no. I'm done with your bitching. I'm done with your playing. You don't listen to a word that I'm saying, and even though I'm trying to make things work, we're getting nowhere. It's just not paying off. So this is where I leave, this is where I go. I'm gonna walk out that door right now. I'm gonna leave this home. I'm just gonna go down the street. I'm just gonna follow my feet and find out where the street takes me. And with every beat that I take, every step that I break, I'll be missing you. That'll do for that one. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And it's called Hobnob Goblin. <laughs> A disc. Like Frodo, oh so desired to cherish the ring, there lives a thing for which my heart doth sing. Golden like the sun, as rugged as a hobo's chin, yet sweet to the senses, I have found the one ring, the one thing that has transformed my being. For I am a hobnob goblin. I fall weak for a week with the oats as I wallow in, and just a sweet, intoxicating smell gets me swallowing my saliva as I try not to follow in line with the other hobnob goblins gobbling. Waddling through the hollows, these fat, slobbering hobnob goblins continue with their consumption, just gibbering, jabbering, cracking them with empty streets of delight. <laughs> At the Sorrowin, the place you can find the hobnob goblins gobbling and waddling, we goblins call this home. Newcomers arrive, sallow, thin, unprepared for the ulti sin their virginized chins are soon to invite in. Enter in, and it's not long before your belly, hungry and hollow, thin from the hard day running the rim of the fast paced rat race, uh, uh, <coughs> running the rim of the fast paced rat race of living. Fits in with the consumption of the goblins. Have your biscuit and join us in the hanging door sign swings and sings. But, a word of caution to anyone tempted to come on in. Always check you've got your ching for if your funds run thin, you'll be out on your ass so far, she'll have to call the medics in. And you'll be shunned. There's no point borrowing from the goblins as they huddle around you, taunting you and laughing with their slobbering, fat, fleshy chins as they continue their gobbling. But we are a cruel breed. Us waddling, wobbling, gibbering, jabbering, slobbering. Huddling, taunting, laughing, gobbling, hobnob goblin. Thank you. Um, and speaking of independent authors, uh, more so independent poets, uh, we've got uh, Fiona next, uh, who's going to read a selection of poems uh, from her own published book uh, entitled Tongues of Flame. So thank you very much. Hello, yeah, my name's Fiona, and I'm going to read a few from my new book of poetry entitled Tongues of Flame. And the first one is Think of You, Think of Me, because it's where the title of the poem, uh, rather, the title of the book comes from, if I can find it. Think of you, think of me. This is getting serious, it's getting dangerous, when days spent apart, away from you, feel like years and years, and in every place, in each new face, each head that turns my way, I see your profile, see your eyes, your smile. Each actor in every film or play walks, talks, acts as you would do. His every mannerism reminds me of you. And every singer in each new song, not by choice, has your voice. I repeat your name, speak to you in tongues of flame. Like a litany, a catechism, I entreat you to reply. Do you feel something similar? Do you do the same? Does each stranger in the street, each new lady you meet, you greet, look somehow familiar? Lady, look like me. 
Does my perfume hang in the air as she passes by? Do you hear my laughter on the wind? Remember my light touch upon your brow? Am I there in your dreams at night? And always, anywhere, anyhow, does it seem you think of me? I trace my name upon your flesh, the indentations of each vowel, each consonant, resonant. I've laid my body next to yours, arms, legs, limbs, enveloping, the intimacy developing. But I need not spell it out to you, need no literacy as a reminder, for you surely remember. My skin lays neat, tastes sweet, in your mind, your memory. This loves testimony. Play me those violins, mandolins, those magic strings, tragic strains of a little love music. Set my feet on fire, make my heart sing, let me dream, fancy I'm dancing to a little love music. Or pen me a poem, a sonnet, write beautifully in calligraphy the lyrics of love. Word it wisely, well, find a fine voice, then let it swell. Rise with the lyrics of love. I was sort of um, told to read three or four out, so I'll finish on the fourth one. <laughs> um, this is <clears throat> one that my niece, who's accompanying me, likes. So it's one called Nothing to Do, but again, it's a love poem, <laughs> if I can find it. There is nothing to say but I love you. There is nothing to think but thoughts of you, of loving you. Nothing else remains, nothing else sustains. All else is but a diversion, everything else a poor relation. When I am away from you, my mind is a one-way track back to you, and I find I can't wait to be there with you, be near you, where there is nothing to do but love you. Thank you very much. Uh, and next up we've got uh, Gemma. The dragon in her cave, I now understand why she breathes flames. She is not angry, but in pain. Trying desperately to alight her cold, dark home. Others so afraid of this creature unknown. Far from myth, she lives in my bones. The knights attack one after another. She only survives because she is stubborn. With each slice the sword inflicts, her pain grows great and her blood runs thick. She has wings, yet really takes flight. She is her own hero, she is her fight. But her own claws, by her own claws, she will be slain or she will survive. My heart holds a thousand iron filaments that leap and sweep with the movement of your magnetic heart. Your energy, a force, forever pulling me towards you. And when we touch, oh how I stick to you. Stronger than the air's pull, forever turning my world on its head. You are my axis, and when we kiss, the aurora borealis cannot compare to my northern light illuminating the cold winter sun. We're going to hand it over to uh, Ron, who's also going to do some poetry as well. Some of you will be pleased. I'm not going to do any sad poetry today. So, the first one, I'm going to do two poems. Uh, one is mine, and it's a fairly long one. And uh, the first one I'm going to do is a a poem by a friend of mine who lives in Mexico. It's called The Shell and it's about people who get hurt and the fact that we tend to <laughs> surround ourselves with a shell. The Shell. Oh, the shell. The most insecure place to be. Where the false illusion of protection gives me the strength to be what I'm meant to be. How scary it could be. 
the shell, oh blessed shell, shining around me, even a pearl I can see, appearing just to prove how right it must be to live inside you, allowing me to finally be me. How scared should I be? The shell, oh hell of a shell, demonic you are, making me feel so cared that I cannot leave. Prisoner of my own choice, of being eternally protected by you, even when I cannot breathe. How can I be scared if who took the decision was me? The shell, oh my sweet shell, you closed your mouth as well I did, and now it's just you and me on the ocean of thoughts, waiting for someone to open your brilliant shell again. Are you as scared as me? Oh my shell, why didn't you protect me from me? Thank you. Right, and this one is by me, it's one of my originals, it's a fairly recent poem. Um, I'll not say anything what it's about, because hopefully the words will be able to paint a picture for you. It's called Dreams. Here I am alone at midnight, sitting looking up at the moonlight, shining through the clouds. A glass of whiskey in my hand, wondering what's become of me and my dreams. My passions, what have I done with my life? A nursery rhyme runs through my head. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. My dreams are slipping away, fading into oblivion, dying in the dark recesses of my mind. My dreams are slipping away. I take a long sip of whiskey from my glass and love the feeling it gives me as it goes straight to my head. I hear a distant rumble as storm clouds gather. I feel at ease as rain begins to fall and pitter-patters on the conservatory roof and a streak of lightning flashes in the night sky. It's at times like this I like to play some moody jazz. You know, something like in those old black and white gangster movies. It's always raining in New York. Streets glistening with the reflection of city lights. I hear that rhyme again. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. My dreams are slipping away, fading into oblivion, dying in the dark recesses of my mind. My dreams are slipping away. I'm at peace sitting here as the rain falls harder, comfortable in my chair as smooth tones of a saxophone accompanied by the tinkling sounds of a piano filtered through the air, dreaming of some lazy, hazy days in the sun. I sigh, remembering happy summer days, laughing and playing, telling stories and dirty jokes about adult things, playing games in the heat of the sun. Oh, what fun we had. Where did the summers go? Where has time gone? Have all those dreams gone too? Doesn't seem right. I can't get the rhyme out of my head. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. My dreams are slipping away, fading into oblivion, dying in the dark recesses of my mind. My dreams are slipping away. I remember hot summer nights, walking through the city. Everything was alive with people leaving bars and clubs, laughing, having a good time. Lovers holding hands, making eyes at each other and kissing on the lips. I envied them. Why am I here? I should go home, but I'm drawn to this nightlife. I see women in short skirts. I wonder what it would be like to have a night of passion. In the heat of passion, we want those things dreams are made of. Then I saw you smiling. As you walked towards me, the city lights held your body in the spotlight. Angel of my dreams, you sang a rhyme. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. My dreams came true when I met you. 
giving me inspiration. Creativity shone bright inside my head. What dreams may come when we dare to dream. Love is the reason for such dreams. Um, this poem does not have a title, so I'm just going to go right into it. It's got a bit wet. <laughs> um, walking through the dim lit forest, my heart goes thud a thud. Fear flows through my every vein, stepping through the mud. I hear a snap, and then I scream, and I start to chase. I turn around, and then I see a long, dark face. Running through the forest, sprinting through the forest, running from that long, dark face. I run and run, and then I stop. You entwine my squirming body, and every breath painfully past my cold, blue lips. Um, yeah, so next of all we're going to have uh, Robbie. Now when I asked Robbie uh, what exactly he wants to do, he uh, said he doesn't even know. Uh, I asked him for a technical sense, he was like, it's whatever, I don't like technicalities. Uh, apparently it's not poetry, it's not nothing, so I don't really know, but uh, it's over to Robbie, who we all, uh, who we all love. <laughs> whether I'm coming or going with poetry and this is called Push Me Pull You. If I'm reading this out on open mic night then I assume I've just explained the title to you. <laughs> I know it's a little presumptuous to think there are people in the room that might not know what a Push Me Pull You refers to but then I assume I'm cleverer than most of you <laughs> and if I am I don't like that. I want you to be as clever as me. Not cleverer, god no, <laughs> but as clever. I want us to be on the same page, so we can appreciate my cleverness together. <laughs> Having said that, I hesitate to add that I need you to understand what I'm trying to say, because in all honesty, I haven't got a clue. And that really is what I'm here trying to tell you. Because the first thing is, that I'm not sure why I'm even here. I want to show you my work, but I hate standing up here and reading aloud. I hate the part of me that needs a crowd. I hate the part of me that thinks I'm too good not to. Because inside, I'm going to push me, pull you. Poetry. Fucking hate poetry. I hate everything about it. Especially mine. And even other people's. But that's how I feel today. And I know that does sound utterly and obviously like bullshit. And it is also grievously disrespectful to everyone here. But I don't mean it. It's my own stuff I hate, not yours, never yours. Your poetry is great, marvellous. Really, I think it's fantastic. And now I just sound like I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not. They're, they're probably the most honest words I'll speak tonight. Because I'm envious of your comfort with what you write, of the quality of what you write. The only, poems, the only poet's work I hate tonight is mine. Except I don't, not really. And that's my dichotomy. Because the only thing I don't know for sure is why what I'm doing up here. One would think I'm good, then I think I'm bad. And most of when I'm stood up here with my pad. At home they read like they should. They make sense. They make perfect sense. Perfect flow. But as soon as I get up here, up here I become a clumsy, cumbersome elephant walking through snow. Preposterously ponderous, plodding pachyderm. And being as you're as clever as me, you'll know that was alliteration. And if you're still awake, you'll know that that was alliteration for alliteration's sake. And yet I still feel the need to explain. Not the fact that at the very least it was pretentious, unnecessary, and a lame attempt at looking clever, but I want you to see the brilliance of it together. Because someone once told me when it comes to poetry I'm a big head, when it suits me, to hide the fact that I'm really not one at all, when in fact it's my insecurities I'm hiding. I boast to hide the doubt I've had all along. Well, my friend, if you're as clever as me, you'll see that you're probably not wrong. Because I know I'm a walking contradiction, telling you one minute about perfect diction and flow, and the next I'm an elephant struggling through snow. It's like when I feel that my ego rises inside. I think, here we go, because I'm the one who despises that ride, who doesn't understand it, why it comes unbidden. It's not like I demand it. It's not like I want it. Excuse me. I'm happy it stays hidden. But then I do something stupid and actually shake its hand. Ooh, look at me, alliteration. 
an elephant in the Arctic. I publish a book and tell everyone writing is only fun when it's not cathartic. How fighting your own demon should be a personal matter. And to be fair, their response is to smile at me. Not out of condescension at my stupid statement, but they smile at me because they know my shallowness presents me from every writing a visceral, honest piece about myself. And yes, because we're all as clever as each other, I do get the irony that the piece I'm reading now is about not writing about myself by writing about myself. <laughs> and my friends port with a lot, like how I keep telling them I'm stopping all this poetry and all this open mic night. Not because I want to hear them ask me not to, but because I'm serious. And then the next day I want to do more. It comes and it goes, just like that. I'm Schrodinger's cap, no one knows for sure. Is my passion dead or is it alive? I can't decide how I feel. I wish someone would open the box for me. Dead cat, or deal or no deal. Because, <laughs> yeah, it's like taking the money when I hear you laugh at something that was meant to be funny. But I feel like a dead cat when the response is more muted and I think, why don't they like that? And I know it's a bit trite, but I see my poetry as Marmite. Some days it's a tasty treat and other days it's monkey spread that smells of bad meat. Because I like my stuff one day and not the next. And I truly wake up not knowing which one to expect. I can go to bed thinking I'm John Betjeman and wake up as Fluella, or vice versa. And some days my vocabulary and grammar are perfect, and some days they're worse. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well you are, you got that. Uh, like my rhymes. And then there's those times I think I'm writing for my own amusement, but because I realise I'm not, I'm writing for fellow poets and friends, and for the amusement of strangers. Everyone, in fact, except myself. Another day I pick up a pen and just write, just let the words fall. And those days, those days are the best days of all. And as I said earlier, I can't write personal pieces, not even on the best days. I prefer not to write about myself, because I would hate to be responsible for putting another misery memoir on the shelf. And yes, Gemma, I do believe that some people use an open mic night for cheap therapy. But that's all right, that's them. But I prefer to write poetry that's not about me. And I do write about dark and horrendous things, but they're not mine. But it's tremendous how you can whinge and whine with imagination. And I know how fortunate I am that I have to make these awful things up. How fortunate I haven't been so drowned in the dark waters that my poetry is imaginary, that I don't need to tread water and keep on breathing. And I see its value to you, and I'm grateful by listening to help you rage against the sea. But writing personal poetry is not for me. Evergreen. I want a love that lasts forever, not for just the one season, for just one day. Something precious, pure. The passion flower, it looks pretty, its scent strong and heady, but it doesn't endure. Its beauty does not stay. So give me the ivy, the evergreen. It may bloom less brightly, but it grows sturdy, year upon year, evermore. <coughs>